So let's do an example. We have a planet has a gravitational field that's uniform. That means it's the same all around it, um, which is going to be important here. I'll explain why that is. Uh, the gravitational potential difference between the surface of the planet and a point 50 meters above, so here's the planet surface, and a point 50 meters above, that gravitational potential difference, delta Vg, I called it 1, is just 20 joules per kilogram. And the question is, hey, if you go from the surface to 20 meters up, what will be the work done? So how much work will you have to do to go from here to here? So I thought this would be good to break it down into a few steps. I thought, so first of all, we're going to need, what will we need? We're going to need the equation for work. So how do we do that? Well, let's go find the equation for work. It goes like this. Remember, it's uh, over here. Work is equal to m delta vg. So that's good. We're just going to write that down here. So m, uh, sorry, w equals m times delta vg. Yay! Now step two, we're going to need to do something about g here, or something about the gravitational field. We're told that this field is uniform. What does that actually mean for us? It means that g is constant. That's the only thing we know, that g is constant. So how do we deal with this? Well, let's just go hunting. Do we have an equation for g? We sure do. It goes delta vg over r. So I'm going to say this then. So that means if it's constant, What's that going to mean then? That means, remember, oops, I'll just write it down like this, maybe in green here. Remember that g equals delta vg over delta r. And we know that that's constant. So what that means then is that delta vg1 over delta r1 is going to be equal to delta vg2 over delta r2. Turns out, oops, a minus here as well. Now good news, because there's two minuses, we can basically ignore those. So part three, then, I'm going to be able to just solve for Vg2 here. So I'm going to maybe write that down. So solve for delta Vg2. Now, how do we do this? Well, first of all, we can ignore the minuses. Do you notice there's a minus here and minus here? So those just cancel out, which is good. We have delta Vg1. What's that? Well, that's this number right here. It's 20. So I can say 20 over delta R1. That's 50. All right, that's going to be equal to, well, Vg2, which I want to find, over delta R2, which is 20. So do you notice then I can find that a delta Vg2, let's just say, is equal to, let's see, 20 times 20. That's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, and add 2 zero, so 400 over 50. That's just because I'm moving this 20 over to the left side. There we go. So what do I get? Well, these are here cancel out. The zeros cancel out at least, which is good. I mean, of course, you can use a calculator, but I just like to not use it if I can. So what's 40 divided by 5? It's 8. So now I know that delta Vg2 equals 8. And what are the units, just in case I wanted them, remember, uh, what are the units of Vg? It's in joules per kilogram. So great. So I can say that's uh, joules per kilogram. Hooray for that. What does this do for me? Well, now I'm ready to solve. I haven't gotten the answer yet, but I'm close. Because what I want to do then for step four, I'll just say, you know, solve for W. So in other words, solve for the work done. And remember the equation for work done. It was work done equals M delta VG. So in this case right here, I know these values, right? So finally, I can plug this in, can't I, into this equation right here. And therefore, I can get W by itself. The work done is just going to be equal to M, the mass, which is 3.5 kilograms. All that times delta Vg, which is 8. Well, 3.5 times 8, what's that? That's 28. Yeah, so that means the work done then is 28 joules. Phew. That was a few steps. That's why I thought it would be good to show you an example like this, because this really does, you know, need, you need to know about the equation for work, and you had to work with gravitational field strength, and it also had to do with uh, gravitational potential. So it's sort of one example that sort of touched on all three of these things we've just learned about.